Hello everyone. I am going to start chapter motion. This is chapter number eight from our NCERT book. First, let us see the definition of motion. In the given slide, we can see there is a change in the position of girl, but there is no change in the position of tree. So, we can define motion as a body is said to be in a state of motion. if it changes its position continuously with respect to its surrounding with the passage of time in this example there's a change in the position of girl so we can say girl is in motion similarly we can define the definition of rest a body is said to be at rest if it does not changes its position continuously with respect to its surrounding with the passage of time here we can say there is no change in the position of tree so trees are at rest next we have distance and displacement in the slide we can observe two lines red and blue here red line denotes the total distance traveled between starting point and ending point and blue line denotes the total displacement so we can define distance as the total path length covered between starting and ending point and displacement is the shortest straight line distance between starting and ending point let us understand distance and displacement in detail from given example here we can see a girl is moving from position a to position b thus distance covered by girl is 15 meter next for calculating displacement we have to look for shortest straight line distance between starting and ending point we find that here displacement is also 15 meter and the direction is east now girl moves back and reaches to point c covering a distance of 5 meter thus the new distance between point a and point c is 20 meter but the total displacement between point a and point c is now 10 meter because this is the shortest straight line distance between point a and point c in the direction of east now we can differentiate between distance and displacement as shown in table below distance is the length of the path traveled by a body while moving from an initial position to a final position whereas displacement is the shortest distance between the initial position and the final position of the body second distance is a scalar quantity so scalar quantities are those who have magnitude only and no direction so we do not need to mention any direction when we talking about scalar quantities whereas displacement is a vector quantity vector quantities are those who have both magnitude as well as direction meaning we need to specify direction with vector quantities next distance measured is always positive 
it can never be negative whereas displacement can be negative or positive depending on the reference point on the basis of the previous slides we can try these two questions i am leaving these two questions for your homework so we have a numerical problem now based on distance and displacement this this question is from our ncert book a farmer moves along the boundary of a square field of site 10 meter in 40 seconds what will be the magnitude of distance and displacement of the farmer at the end of 2 minutes 20 seconds from his initial position so in question we have given a square whose side is 10 meter so first we can calculate the perimeter of square field by applying formula 4 into side so we have 40 meter so the perimeter of the square field is 40 meter and it's given in question that farmer completes one round in 40 seconds so first we will calculate distance in time 2 minutes 20 seconds if we convert this time into seconds we have 140 seconds <clears throat> since it is given farmer completes 40 meter round in 40 seconds so in 140 second if we calculate then farmer can cover 3 and a half round means means three complete round and one half round and we know distance is defined as the total length covered between starting point and ending point so if you multiply 3.5 into 40 meters so we can calculate the total distance which comes to be 140 meter now to calculate displacement we have to look for the shortest distance between starting point and ending point so in the given farmer we know farmer completes 3 and a half round so when farmer completes one round of his field then his displacement is zero because the starting and ending points are same because farmer start let's let's farmer start from point a and after completing one round he com he comes back to point a means in one complete round the displacement of farmer is zero so in a time span of 2 minutes 20 seconds in one for which is 140 second farmer can cover three complete round and one half round thus in first three complete rounds his displacement is zero because he comes back to its starting point but in last half round he reaches point c as shown in figure so in the last half round the starting point of farmer is a and the ending point is c so we need to calculate this distance ac in this case the displacement is ac that is the diagonal of the square so by applying pythagoras theorem we can calculate the displacement ac which comes out to be 14.1 meter next we have another numerical which is based on previous example so i am leaving this for your homework next topic we have speed you must have studied about speed in previous classes so speed is a way of measuring how quickly something is moving the formula for calculating speed is given by distance per unit time speed is the scalar quantity it does not have a direction means we do not need to specify any direction with speed the si unit for speed is meter per second this slide shows 
speedometer the speedometer is a device which is used for measuring the speed now we have numericals based on speed a car travels 36 km in 2 hours calculate its speed in km per hour and in meter per second so in part a we can apply simple formula of speed and calculate speed as 18 km per hour in part b we need to calculate speed in meter per second so as mentioned in question 1 km equal to 1000 meter 1 minute equal to 60 second and 1 hour equals to 60 into 60 second so we can calculate speed in meter per second as shown in slide next topic we have velocity see velocity is a vector quantity means we need to specify direction also when we are dealing with velocity velocity can be defined as the distance traveled by an object per unit time in a particular direction there is only small difference between speed and velocity speed is a quantity who have magnitude only but velocity is speed plus direction means if we specify direction with speed we call it velocity thus the formula for velocity becomes displacement per unit time we have given the difference between speed and velocity the so speed of a body is the distance traveled by it per unit time whereas velocity of the body is the distance traveled by it per unit time in a given direction speed is a scalar quantity whereas velocity is a vector quantity as mentioned before speed cannot be zero but velocity can be zero let us understand speed and velocity in detail with the help of the given example usha swims in a 90 meter long pool she covers 180 meter in 1 minute by swimming from one end to the other end and back along the same straight path find the average speed and average velocity of usha so first we need to calculate average speed as we know speed is given by total distance covered divided by total time taken so usha covers 180 meter by swimming from one end to the other end of the pool so distance in this case is 180 meter and she took 1 minute which is equals to 60 second so if we divide 180 by 60 the average speed comes out to be 3 meter per second mm -hmm. next we have to calculate velocity so we can see in this example usha swims from one end to the other and come back along the same straight path so in this case the displacement of usha is zero and we know the formula for every velocity is given by displacement divided by total time taken so on substituting the value the average velocity comes out to be zero so we can say the average speed of usha is 3 meter per second and her average velocity is 0 meter per second so in this example we can conclude that average velocity can be zero but average speed can never be zero now i am assigning you this worksheet which is based on today's lecture you are supposed to do this worksheet on a4 size sheets very neatly i will also send this worksheet on whatsapp group in my next lecture i will start with topic acceleration see you in my next lecture thank you